In this blog post, we're going to clean the dust of a handheld computer that wouldn't be so interesting if it wasn't for its 386SX CPU. I found no information related with this PC. The user's manual gives me nothing but the typical safety warnings such as recommended operating temperatures and that sort of things. I didn't find any information related to the release date. Although the BIOS is from 1999, it was probably updated in the past. The device has no dates on the labels. The first trustworthy clue that we get comes from the user's manual, which is the 1997 copyright date. Maybe the most relevant document we have to give this computer a date is the European Declaration of Conformity that was signed in August 1995. So that's probably the release date. And this particular machine was manufactured a couple of years later. Let's take a look at the outside. It has a power button and a screen configuration button. Furthermore, it has a couple of PCMCIA slots, an RS-232 serial port, and a power connector. On the back, there is an infrared port, some power contacts, and a dock station port. Let's go back to 1995 while we take a look at what's inside. The 386 has been out for almost a decade. By this time, it has been discontinued since the most common computers have 486, SX2, DX2, and DX4. The ones with the big box were able to buy Pentiums, which were released two years before. Coincidentally, August 1995 is the debut year of Windows 95 an operating system that could run on this PC if it had a little more RAM. At this time, MS-DOS is still the most used operating system in home PCs. This particular machine is out of its time, that it's not rare in the industrial world, where having old hardware is a requirement in order to have bug-free systems. Now it's open. The finish of the electronics catches my eyes. We can see a component soldered directly to the pin of a knife C. Another striking example is a PCB that appears to be glued on the RAM memory with a cable soldered directly to a pin of the memory IC. Now let's see what it has inside. Here we have a 7.2 volts, 1.5 ampere hour lithium ion battery. A battery to retain user data in RAM, a 200 by 320 black and white resistive touchscreen, a motherboard with ports and power inputs and the main motherboard. On the motherboard, there is a flash memory with the operating system and the BIOS, a PCMCIA controller, a chipset for which I didn't find any information, a 32 kilobytes cache memory for the CPU, and the 386. Actually, it is an AMD Elon SC300, a 386SX based CPU intended for embedded devices. The 386 was released originally in 1986 and was the first x86 32-bit CPU. This is a full PC placed in a really small spot. I don't know anything about its capabilities executing software or its limitations, so let's get ourselves into the wild. When it's powered on, MS DOS boots. During the startup, a 1 megabyte RAM disk is created. Before that, a program called Card Trick creates E Drive. Then, Microsoft's Power Manager 1.0 is initialized, and a basic menu comes up. Doing some testing, I found out that by pressing the menu button while turning the PC on, an advanced menu pops up. From this menu, we can set the date and the time. It allows us to run diagnostics for the memory, the screen, the serial ports, the touch screen, and the peripherals. 
there are more options, but let's get right into it. It comes with MS-DOS 6.22. There is a virtual keyboard that takes around one third of the screen. At the end, we have a usable area of just 200 by 200 pixels. This small resolution triggers some undesired line breaks. The operating system is limited since some basic tools are not included. I try to rename autoexec.bat to avoid the menu execution at boot time, but the C drive is write protected. When we go to the RAM disk, we have 1 megabyte available for user data. In the E drive, we have 2 additional megabytes for user data. This PC has a total of 4 megabytes of RAM, although just 2 megabytes are usable by the system while the other 2 megabytes are intended for user data. In order to go forward, I used a PCMCIA to compact flash adapter and copied some programs into the memory card. Since now we have 128 megabytes for user data, I disabled the RAM disk unit to free some RAM memory. To check if the computer is able to execute basic programs in text mode, I tried to run QBasic, but the text mode used by the program is not compatible with the screen. To bypass the editor, I execute enables with the run argument. Now we can hear the intro music, but it's not possible to play since the keyboard disappears. Furthermore, the screen cuts off. I've seen that at MS-DOS startup time, a prompt asks about the execution of a tool called CTTY which I didn't know anything about. Apparently, it's a remote console for MS-DOS, so maybe I can take the control of the device from another PC. I've used the RS-232 to USB adapter. From the Linux console, I've tried to connect to the MS-DOS console through the serial port. Maybe from here, I can use programs in text mode. I've executed the installation program of Windows 3.11. Apparently, the majority of DOS programs, instead of writing to the console, they write directly to the graphic memory. So the programs are shown on the PC screen instead of the remote console. Once again, the screen cuts off and it's not possible to do anything, not even from the remote keyboard. To try other screen modes, I executed Prince of Persia since this game is compatible with several graphic standards. This time, we can only see the half left of the screen. Aside from a little problem, the game could be played if we had a keyboard. To reach the limits, I tried Doom and Sky Roads. The first one hasn't half enough RAM and the second one needs a better graphic card. I've copied the image of a MS-DOS 6.22 installation to the compact flash card. I tried to boot using the ATA boot option, but this PC still boots from its flash memory. In conclusion, this is a very limited device because of its keyboard and screen. If it wasn't for that, this machine could be used as a regular PC.